Hi, welcome to Think Tech Asia, coming to you from Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. I'm your host, Hong Jiang. I'm an associate professor of geography at UH Manoa. And my guest today is uh, Mr. Michael Tam, president and CEO of Martin and MacArthur. And our, talk, our topic today is uh, um, an interesting topic that uh, Michael came up with, thinking outside the COA box. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with, with Martin and MacArthur, um, it's a company that has been making fine COA furniture in Hawaii for over 50 years. And today, uh, with its president and CEO, Michael Tam, uh, we're going to learn uh, more about COA as a rich heritage and uh, prized natural resource in Hawaii, and also learn about the effort and innovation made at Martin and MacArthur in using COA wood for fine furniture building while leading the uh, reforestation of COA in Hawaii. And Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to be here. Huh? And talking about the COA box, you know, yes. that's the image people think of uh, uh, so uniquely Hawaii, the COA furniture. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, a lot of people um, who are from Hawaii or who have been in Hawaii for a long time know of Koa Wood uh, because they've either seen Koa furniture in people's homes or they own a, a Koa box or something made mm -hmm. out of Koa Wood. Because Koa is that wood that only grows in Hawaii, no place else in the world. Um, and so Koa, Koa is so highly revered um, throughout the Hawaiian Islands and around the world. So really unique, and I, I'm excited and look forward to learning more about Koa right. with you today. Uh -huh. And also, um, I remember I've been in Hawaii for eight years, uh -huh. and uh, very quickly I look at I learn about koa, and uh, apparently it's a wood that's really really beautiful, right. and really uh, connected to the Hawaiian heritage. Koa actually has a history that dates as far back as King Kamehameha the Great, uh, because koa was the wood that was used by King Kamehameha's warriors um, to build a. a weapons and canoes that were used to help unite the Hawaiian Islands. And in fact, um, King Kamehameha's warriors were called koa, which meant warrior. Oh, that's uh, what Hawaiian. the word means. Um, and then it, the wood that they used to make their weapons and their, uh, their canoes then became synonymous with koa itself. And so that's how the wood became known as koa as well. Uh, so the wood itself, uh, used for weapon making, it must uh, be very hard. And it's a relatively durable. hardwood, okay. um, and um, it can be shaped uh, very well with skilled hands, um, and that's why even as far back as King Kamehameha I, um, they were uh, using tree trunks to make uh, canoes, and they were also making uh, um, weapons and different um, uh, implements that way as well. Can you place koa uh, as a natural resource right. uh, with other kinds of uh, um, indigenous hardwoods? in Hawaii, like where is koa, you know, what other woods are also as important as koa? Koa is probably the wood in Hawaii that has the most prominence now. Um, it's probably the most, the most highly valued, um, and it actually is, uh, I think, the most popular wood mm. that's grown in Hawaii. There are beautiful, beautiful other woods in Hawaii as well. Mm -hmm. um, gorgeous woods that you, you've probably heard of, including milo and ko. Uh, um, um, and um, there's cook pine uh, introduced by, uh, uh, by settlers coming in. Um, and uh, 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 um, there are other woods that uh, um, have been with Hawaii for a long time, such as sandalwood. Mm -hmm. um, and so there That's are a number right. of different woods that are in Hawaii, but koa is probably the most high, highly revered now. And, and uh, tell me the reasons. The reason why koa, I think people love um, koa so much, is because it's so beautiful. Okay. Um, because the rich, um, dark, curly grain um, and the, the pattern that, that causes a rippling effect, just like a, you're looking at a ribbon. And mm -hmm. so uh, the light catches koa in different ways, uh, with the, the way you look at it, so that um, koa has different colors when you turn the box or when you look at a mm -hmm. piece of furniture from one angle or another. And you can see that with a small piece of koa, such as on a koa ring or a watch, or you can actually see it on a large piece like a, uh, a dining room table or a bed, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because koa has that radiance yeah, um, yeah. That, um, that attracts people's attention. And frankly, a lot of people say that they can just stare at a piece of koa furniture for a long time because it, um, it has so many different colors in it, yeah, yeah. Um, and it has such a rich, warm texture to it. We're going to show some of the photos uh, that you, you sent, right. uh, sent to us uh, to the studio later on. And clearly, just from your description of koa, 
uh, furniture that you love Koa. I love Koa. I'm not actually <laughs> passionate about Koa. Uh -huh. um, frankly, uh, um, growing up here in Hawaii, my family's from Maui. Um, I always was around koa growing up. Uh, my family had um, some koa furniture and we always saw koa uh, um, in um, beautiful resorts uh, and in friends homes uh, because koa is a part of the Hawaiian culture mm -hmm. and a part of the lifestyle of Hawaii. Um, and uh, uh, we realized that koa was something special that um, could, uh, could represent Hawaii as well um, even as I was growing up. And so I'm pleased and proud uh, to be part of a family um, of um, furniture craftsman now that's actually um, doing more with koa than uh, people ever thought possible. Wow, that's wonderful. So koa grows only on the Big Island? No, actually ko koa grows in all the Hawaiian Islands. Okay. Um, and so there's koa in Kauai, um, koa on Oahu, and koa on Maui as well. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, it, what about, how do you characterize the koa resource? Like uh, is the forest uh, trees dwindling? Um, right. Certainly there's a lot less koa than there was in the time of King Kamehameha uh, the Great. Uh, because way back then, uh, the Big Island, and frankly the other islands as well, were full of koa. Mm -hmm. uh, um, dense tropical forests um, full of koa. Um, over the years, through a number of different reasons, including um, the introduction of cattle into the Big Island, uh, um, um, the amount of koa trees um, has decreased. However, there are still over 100,000 acres on private land um, with koa on it. Mm. Um, koa grows in the mid elevation, so it doesn't grow in the very top high uh, mountain tops, um, such as Mauna Kea, and nor does it grow along the seaside uh, um, where it's hot and sandy. It grows in the mid elevations. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, if you go into the mid elevations all around uh, the Big Island, more likely than not, you're going to see koa there. So um, the reason koa furniture. Our, our, our pieces are so expensive is not because of a lack of resource. I think um, the reason why koa um, is pricey um, is because it's such a highly regarded wood and there aren't a lot of people who are making koa furniture anymore. Mm -hmm. Maybe 15, 20 years ago there might have been a dozen different uh, 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 um, furniture workshops in Hawaii making koa furniture. Uh, and by a workshop I mean at least three or four people um, mm -hmm. and sometimes more people uh, okay. um, working together in a, in a, a community or in a company uh, making koa furniture. Mm -hmm. Now um, Martin MacArthur is uh, um, the only uh, company of any size mm. um, that's making koa furniture. Uh, we actually have 30 craftsmen um, um, and we are hiring new craftsmen every year. Um, of course, there are other people who are making gorgeous koa furniture in mm -hmm. Hawaii and I don't mean to discredit or discount them at all. Mm -hmm. um, there are individual craftsmen who are making incredible koa furniture mm. and frankly we love that yeah. uh, because the creativity and the beauty mm -hmm. of the furniture that's made by individual craftsmen in Hawaii is outstanding mm. and um, frankly the community of koa furniture makers is a combination of uh, craftsmen in a, in a larger company like Martin and MacArthur as well as individual craftsmen who are doing it in their own studios mm. or in their own homes as well. And that's the beauty about um, Hawaii, uh, because um, we can celebrate the idea of craftsmanship, uh, whether you're in a company or whether you're just doing it on your own. Um, so uh, Martin and MacArthur own, uh, has uh, co furniture. All, all furniture pieces are handmade. All the furniture at Martin and MacArthur is made in Hawaii by our own craftsmen. Okay. And frankly, there is no furniture company in Hawaii that's selling furniture um, that can claim that their furniture is all made here in Hawaii apart from Martin and MacArthur. At that, no time has Martin MacArthur ever uh, outsourced its furniture to anyone else outside of Hawaii or any other craftsmen who are not directly employed by Martin and MacArthur. Uh, that's really fascinating. Uh, look like, uh, um, is it fair to say that a crafts, uh, craftsmanship overall for uh, you know, handmade furnitures are reducing? Uh, As a matter of fact, the craftsmanship for Martin MacArthur or, or the craftsmanship for furniture is something that is uh, an art form that was um, throughout Europe and throughout Asia for centuries. Okay. Um, fine craftsmen were making furniture. Um, and um, in fact, uh, um, uh, um, to become a fine craftsman, a master craftsman of furniture, you have to have a lot of experience. That's right. Um, yeah. And um, even though, for example, we have 30 craftsmen um, working at Martin and MacArthur, we only have six master craftsmen. Mm. And each of those master craftsmen have been working for no less 
than 25 years oh, making wow. fine koa furniture. Mm -hmm. um, so we um, also have the only apprenticeship program in Hawaii uh, for fine furniture building. Um, and so every year we're bringing in new apprentices um, who are, are apprentices for between 10 to 15 years. Uh -huh. And so you're a novice, you're an apprentice for 10 or 15 years, and then you earn the right to become a journeyman. And then so between um, um, 15 to 20 years, you're a journeyman at Martin and MacArthur, mm -hmm. and then you become mm -hmm. a master craftsman. Wow, it takes many years and a lot of commitment. And a lot of commitment and a lot of patience because you need to live and breathe the sense of furniture building mm -hmm. um, and have a, a sixth sense about what it takes to create a beautiful, balanced piece of furniture. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't come very quickly. Um, and it's a skill that is um, imparted from our master craftsmen um, to the apprentices um, every day. Uh, wow. um, and um, so you can spend years sanding uh, uh, um, and um, helping to uh, um, um, select and assist a master craftsman mm -hmm. before you're actually uh, um, doing anything beyond that. Um, but then during that time, you're getting a good feel for the wood. Um, and that's why being a master craftsman at Martin MacArthur is such, a, such a, an important and a, a prestigious position uh, because there are so few of them even at Martin and MacArthur. Wow, uh, that, that's, that's really, really interesting. Do you see uh, a lot of interest in uh, new people coming in to want to learn? Um, As a matter of fact, uh, just this past uh, a month, we've hired uh, um, two new high school graduates from Farrington High School. Mm. Uh, um, um, and what we're looking for um, are young people who have a passion for wood. Okay. Of course, anyone who's uh, uh, um, just graduated from high school doesn't have a lot of experience, if any, uh, working with wood. But if they have a passion for it, um, if, they've, um, if they've shown that they have a proficiency with the, the feel or the touch of wood, that's what we're looking for. And then we would teach them. Uh, we also are looking for people who are stable, um, who have a sense of mind about themselves that, mm -hmm. um, and a pride that they're willing to work at it. Mm -hmm. um, and they're willing to, uh, 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 to spend the time that it takes to become a craftsman. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we welcome them into our family that way. Wow. Uh, and and when, once they become part of the family, they are going to be in the family for many we hopefully, years. Hopefully, uh, a, a craftsman is going to find a wonderful life at Martin and MacArthur, making fine co furniture and home accessories um, so that they don't have to go anywhere else. The challenge is going to be that a craftsman at Martin and MacArthur is going to learn how to make all the different types of furniture um, and pieces that we have. So you're not just learning how to make rocking chairs mm -hmm. or beds or okay. desks or, um, or display cabinets. You need to be able to make all of those different pieces of furniture. Okay. And that's why it takes such a long time because you need to um, become proficient and expert at making all of those pieces of furniture be before you become a master. Uh, do they learn to work with different kinds of woods? Actually, we can make and we have made in our past furniture of a variety of different woods, uh, woods in Hawaii as well as woods that um, um, we brought in from the mainland, mm -hmm. depending on what our customers are looking for. Mm. Um, and so uh, when you're a fine furniture craftsman, it, it's, it's not um, related to one specific wood, um, but it's the idea of how to um, cut, identify, and piece together and assemble and design uh, um, fine, fine wood furniture, regardless of what the species of wood is. It just so happens uh, that the vast majority of all the furniture that we build uh, mm -hmm. is going to be koa because people in Hawaii love koa so much. Wonderful. Um, let's take a short break. I, we all okay. look forward to hearing more. And we have also those uh, uh, photos of those beautiful koa furniture right. that we're going to show later on. Uh, this is uh, Think Tech Asia. I'm your host, Hong Jiang. We've been talking with uh, Mr. Michael Tam president and CEO of Martin and MacArthur about thinking outside the co-op box. We'll be right back after this short break. I'm Jay Fidel. That's Sharon Moriwaki of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And every Wednesday, we have Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We've been doing it for some time now. And we have some fantastic guests on there, unbelievable guests, who give us insight into what is going on in a very complex, sometimes very confusing, sometimes very disappointing <laughs> area of, of progress in the state. So we love doing this. We love meeting them. We love talking to them. We love having their ideas out on the table. So maybe, just maybe, we can all make some sense of what's going on. Sharon, what do you 
thing. I think that's absolutely correct. We enjoy we enjoy ourselves meeting with all these people <laughs> and hearing about the energy and the state of clean energy and hopefully we advance clean energy for the state. So it's terrific. Join us. Okay, it's us. every Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday is Energy Day. Every energy Wednesday, Wednesday, four to five p.m. Hawaii, the state of clean energy here on Think Tech Hawaii. Energy we'll Wednesday. We'll see you there. Hi, we're back. We're live. This is Think Tech Asia, <coughs> uh, and I'm your host Hong Jiang. We've been talking about the koa wood, the koa furniture. Uh, so, Michael, um, let's look at uh, some of uh, the uh, the artists you're, you're talking about. So, right. so the control Bye. room. Can you bring the photos, uh, starting from the very first one? So uh, explain to us what is, what, what's going on here. This is our craftsman, Fernando. And Fernando's been with our company for over 15 years. Um, and um, Fernando is, is um, sanding um, a, a sofa, a, a Koa sofa now. Um, and Fernando is an expert um, at the, um, the feather touch that it takes to create the perfectly smooth Koa furniture in fact, the Koa furniture gets sanded three different times with increasingly uh, finer grits of sandpaper. Mm -hmm. um, and so that way, um, it gets smoother and smoother and almost to a glass-like finish. And so Fernando is an expert at that, and he's currently uh, finishing up a, uh, the sanding on a, on a piece of uh, um, furniture. I see. Let's look at the next one. Now, uh, here we have um, new Koa slabs um, that are being brought into uh, our furniture workshop. The Koa slabs come through Young Brothers on barges um, and uh, um, um, they get delivered to our, our shop. And then we have two large kilns uh, where we uh, uh, um, put the, the, the furniture, the, I, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Koa slabs um, in order to dry them uh, to a humidity of about 8%. Mm -hmm. um, and that's uh, what um, what's being done now. Uh, and the next photo, please. Miles is making a rocking chair, um, and he's um, helping to assemble a rocking chair. Uh, Miles is uh, one of our journeymen, um, and so he's working with a master craftsman, Don. Um, and the rocking chair has been uh, um, the most successful piece of furniture that Martin MacArthur has. It's the piece of furniture that we are known for because we have the most balanced rocking chair, I believe, in the world. And you we, can use it for life. We can use it for life because we guarantee the furniture for life. Mm -hmm. In and this next image, next, um, our yeah. master craftsman, Sao, is making a double pedestal table, koa table. And so uh, a double pedestal table is extra big, so this table can actually seat between eight to ten people. Um, and, um, and our craftsman, Sao, is um, finishing up that table now. It's, it, it, is it also pretty heavy? It's very heavy, okay. Um, and the wonderful thing about it is it comes pre-assembled. And so unlike the furniture that you might be buying in some locations where you have to have diagrams of to assemble A to B and C to D, all, mm. of, our, all of our furniture comes pre-assembled, um, and then we ship anywhere in the world. Okay. Uh, next photo, please. So here we're looking at the now seedling, right? Now here we're looking at koa seedlings. And these koa seedlings um, come from mother trees, in the north uh, uh, area uh, of, um, of um, um, the Hamakua district. Um, and this is part of our, our partnership with Hawaii Legacy Hardwood. And um, in partnership with Hawaii Legacy Hardwood, we're planting new koa trees mm -hmm. um, to be sure that there's koa for future generations. We're going to talk uh, more ab about your partnership with Hawaii right. Legacy Hardwood because we actually had a program right. uh, with, Randall, with Mao Randall Mao about that uh -huh. earlier. Yeah. The next uh, photo, please. Now, this is a grand old koa tree. How many you, years? Um, I'd say this tree is about 50 or 60 years old. Mm. Now, when you look at koa, you realize that this tree is rigid. So it's not going to be swaying like a palm tree or a banana tree. Uh, but it's going to be in an elevation where there's lots of wind and lots of storms and lots of rain. And that's part of the reason why um, uh, a lot of people feel that, that koa is so special because it goes through such a difficult growing process mm. in the mid elevations because it's a relatively rigid tree. Okay. It's not a soft and a swaying tree at all. Um, let's come back, look, look, look at the beginning of uh, uh, koa, koa tree uh, wood become used 
uh, for furniture making. Right. Uh, you talk about early on, uh, Kamehameha used it right. for canoe and for yes. weapons. When did it um, become used for making other furniture? In the uh, mid and late 1800s, uh, um, it, um, koa was actually pretty widely used uh, for basic furniture. And then fine furniture makers uh, um, came in, and they came in from all over the world, not, okay. only, not only from um, the mainland, the United States, but from Asia as well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, um, from China in particular, uh, and, uh, um, and uh, they bought the craft of, of, of making fine furniture mm. um, to Hawaii, and they began making koa furniture. And so you had a combination, um, as Hawaii is, a combination of the East and the West, and the technique and the craftsmanship of building fine koa furniture was introduced with all of those people coming in to the islands in the 1800s. As a matter of fact, some of the pieces of koa furniture um, that were made um, at the turn of the century um, in the very late 1800s are still in existence today, and you'll see them in Washington Place, mm. uh, uh, where the governors uh, uh, used to live. Um, and um, you'll also see some of it um, in Iolani Palace um, and uh, in um, Queen Emma's Summer Palace. Uh, and in terms of making fine furniture, um, uh, would you say Martin and MacArthur has been leading that effort? Well, I think that's going to be history to judge that, but I would say that Martin MacArthur has been um, uh, um, uh, a very strong force in making fine koa furniture because we've been in existence longer than any other furniture company in the history of Hawaii. Mm. Um, we've been around for 53 years, going on 54, and no furniture company in Hawaii has been, a long, been, has been around for that long a period of time. Mm -hmm. um, and. Um, I attribute that to the passion of our craftsmen and the fact that they are teaching uh, new apprentices and new craftsmen how to do the trade. Um, so we never ever want to uh, have uh, the art of making fine koa furniture die uh, in Hawaii. And so we're particularly looking for uh, um, um, passing that on to future generations as well. And that's also going to keep Martin MacArthur alive and strong. Have you always been specializing in a koa? Uh, Martin MacArthur has been specializing in koa um, because um, koa is so highly regarded in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, but um, because koa is, is uh, so valued, a lot of people are looking for Martin MacArthur, and Martin MacArthur has become synonymous with koa. Mm. And so not only koa furniture, uh, but other um, home accessories and home furnishings made with koa wood as well. And so a lot of times when people think about Martin MacArthur when I'm in um, um, social situations, they say koa wood. <laughs> um, they don't necessarily say koa furniture, they just say Martin MacArthur koa. Yeah. Um, and that's because uh, um, there's a relationship between Martin and MacArthur and koa in Hawaii. Um, let's, uh, uh, control room, let's look at uh, the next set of photos, and these are the products made. Right. Now uh. here we have a Queen Emma dining table. And if you see this Queen Emma dining table, um, it's made uh, with a Biedermeier style, which was a style of furniture uh, from the late 1800s throughout Europe. Um, and we applied it uh, um, to this, this piece of furniture because it shows off the light and dark colors of different pieces of koa, as is the case with Biedermeier. It also has a gentle gracing, graceful curve, and you can see how beautiful the apron around the, uh, the dining table is. You notice how the apron, uh, um, actually uh, the koa is cut uh, um, vertically as opposed to horizontally because that plays off of the beauty of the wood that way. And it reinforces the shape of the base of the, of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the dining table as well. Beautiful piece. Uh, next one. Now this is part of our newer uh, innovative products and these are koa eternity rings. They're made with our own private stock of koa. The ring on the left has a combination of light blonde koa and dark koa, and the ring on the right has a combination of our koa wood um, as well as paua shell from the Pacific Ocean. Um, and so this is all on a bezel of tungsten, which is the hardest metal in the world. And so it's much harder than titanium um, because tungsten will never scratch. Oh, and it'll wow. always stay shiny. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why we, uh, uh, we insist that all of our, our rings are made with tungsten. Um, next, next photo, please. This next photo is our koa sunglasses, uh, because what we're trying to do is um, open up koa to more and more more people uh, in Hawaii and around the world. 
because not a lot of people will necessarily just buy a dining table, mm -hmm. but a lot of people will buy something like uh, um, a pair of sunglasses or, or, or earrings um, uh, or, or, or a, uh, a watch. And so these sunglasses are made with Koa wood. We have 25 different styles of Koa sunglasses, all with premium lenses, uh, all made with our own private stock of Koa. Uh, is it heavy? Koa is actually incredibly light huh. uh, because what you're often thinking about when you think of these personal accessories such as sunglasses or, or, uh, uh, or, or watches is metal. And metal is a lot heavier than Koa. And oh. so it's surprisingly light when it's applied in small quantities uh, uh, to personal accessories. I see. Of course, with this next image of a four-poster bed, and this is we call our lahiki, or our sunrise, rising sunbed, because of the, uh, the, the headboard um, is, uh, uh, is cut in a, uh, uh, a shape of a sunrise. Uh, and this is inspired by the sunrise over Haleakala. Um, and so this is a beautiful um, four-poster bed uh, made by our craftsmen. Uh, next one. And this next one goes back to our innovative personal accessories. This is uh, the watch that we are most proud of. This is a solid Koa watch. So it's not made of metal bands. It's made with solid Koa wood that's been carved into individual links. This is actually a self-winding automatic watch. And so you don't have a battery. And so the more you wear it, it, uh, uh, it winds by itself. Oh, okay. Sapphire crystal face, 21 joule movement to ensure its precision accuracy. And so this is a quality piece, uh, a quality watch. And next one over here is, this of is course, our iPhone, everybody recognizes Our that. iPhone uh, cover, made with solid curly koa. Um, fits the iPhone 5S, and we're soon coming out with a Galaxy model. Well, clearly, you are making new products right. uh, with koa wood. And frankly, what we want to do is we want to become um, the lifestyle purveyor um, for koa wood not simply stand for Koa furniture. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is uh, we want to extend Koa um, so that more and more people can enjoy how beautiful Koa is. Uh, because sometimes people are going to think that, well, I don't know if I want to be up to or want to afford uh, buying a piece of Koa furniture. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you look at um, our retail stores now and you see everything from watches to sunglasses to iPhone cases to rings, uh, to jewelry all made with koa wood, um, there's a greater chance that everyone can share in the beauty of koa wood, and that's what our goal is. Uh, fascinating. What are some of the more popular uh, koa product? Uh, oh, the, by the, far. The, the new ones. Um, we've, uh, 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 we are, uh, uh, the most popular is our koa watches. Uh, okay. And we are continually innovating and in introducing new designs of koa watches Every quarter, I'd say. Um, in the past um, three months, we've introduced four new designs of Koa watches. And so each of them have different shapes of the, uh, of the face and different number of links across mm -hmm. um, and different designs on the faces themselves. Um, and so the whole idea is to always have something fresh for our customers so that they're always going to see something new. Um, uh, an area that we're, they were, we're very proud of um, is our, our, our Koa and, and Tungsten line, which includes everything from bracelets to pendants to key, key rings and so forth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because um, Koa is something not just for men or for women, it's for both. Um, and so we have um, uh, products that are, are, are appropriate for both men and women made out of Koa wood. Um, in terms of this design, do you have uh, separate de specialized designers? Yes. Uh, or do you just have these master craftsmen? Uh. Yes and yes. Uh, a master craftsman, uh, very often they're skilled at, at creating uh, pieces, not only furniture, but they are skilled at making um, smaller pieces as well. And so a matter of fact, a number of our, our master craftsmen actually do design work. And so if you look at our photo albums and you see the beautiful images of Hawaii on their photo albums, that's designed specifically by our craftsmen. Mm -hmm. um, and then other items are designed with a, a craftsman's input uh, um, and so that there's a hui uh, of different uh, 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 um, craftsmen within the, in the, in the shop um, that put together different items like that and the designs for them. Uh, stores that you have, uh, do you have stores on all islands? We do. We actually have stores on all four major islands. We have six stores on Oahu um, and we have three stores on Maui, one in Kauai and one in the Big Island. Wow. And so we also have an internet business, um, www.martinandmacarthur.com. Um, and so that way people all around the world can buy all of our co-op products without really having to worry about being in Hawaii. 
Do you have most of your customers from outside of Hawaii? Oh, what's the proportion? Oh, I'd say it's about 50-50. Mm -hmm. Because koa is so highly valued in Hawaii, a lot, of, a lot of people who live in Hawaii come to our stores now to discover what new is, uh, is being made by our craftsmen. Um, and there are lots of local uh, kamainas who love our watches and love our rings and love our iPhone cases and our sunglasses um, and, of course, the furniture. Um, but um, to visitors, uh, um, the attraction is going to be uh, um, these special items that are made with a wood that can only be found in Hawaii mm -hmm. um, and products that you can only see in Hawaii, um, like a koa watch. Uh, um, and um, a lot of times visitors are, are surprised that um, you could have a, wo a watch made with solid wood that way. Uh, and they're delighted that it's something that's made only with wood that's grown here in Hawaii. That's interesting. Um, it's time for us to, to take another break. Um, when we come back, um, I wanted to ask you more about uh, um, your personal story of right. how you get involved in Martin and MacArthur and also your marketing strategy. Great. Will so th this is a Think Tech Asia. We've been talking about the Koa wood, Koa furniture, uh, especially um, with Martin and MacArthur. So we'll be right back after this short break. Aloha, my name is Willow Chang Elion, and I host a show called The Art of Life. We air live every Friday from 2 to 3 p.m. And what we do is basically we focus on individuals who create a unique sense of place for Hawaii. These are movers and shakers, artists, innovators. They are also traditionalists. They're all involved in the archival process, and they make this place a unique place, one that makes Hawaii a richer place to be. I hope you do join us and certainly tell your friends about the show whether they live here or they live abroad it's a way to give back to our community. We're keeping it Pono. Hi we're back we're live this is Think Tech Asia and uh, I'm your host Hong Jiang. I've been speaking with uh, Mr. Michael Tam president and CEO of Martin and MacArthur about the Koa Box, the Koa word, thinking outside the Koa Box. Fascinating to learn about uh, um, Koa Wood and uh, Martin and MacArthur craftsmanship. Uh, coming back to Martin and MacArthur, how do you help uh, make the Koa Wood or Koa furniture almost like an icon of Hawaii? Koa actually speaks for itself because once people see how beautiful Koa is, um, there's very little marketing that you have to do. The key thing is to help people to understand how gorgeous um, koa is so they come and take a look at it. Um, because once you see koa, you'll see that it's different from any other wood. Um, what we have in our, our retail stores, our, our retail professionals uh, who um, are trained um, to how to speak about koa mm -hmm. um, and what goes into making our koa uh, uh, furniture and our, our home accessories. Um, and so they're very knowledgeable. And so um, the goal is to help people to better understand mm -hmm. everything about COA okay. so that they can feel comfortable with it as well. Uh, when you talk about education, in addition to in-store kind of a person-to-person -person -person dialogue, right. anything, uh, anything else you do, activities right. involving uh, tourists or local people? We are involved with a lot of marketing efforts, tying in with a lot of the resorts in Hawaii uh, and helping them with their efforts to try to educate their, their visitors, their mm -hmm. guests. Um, and so we participate um, in seminars and in training programs in a number of di the different resorts uh, um, for um, Hawaii, not only wood crafts, but um, craftsmen in general. Mm -hmm. Because in our stores, we not only have coal wood products, but we have products uh, um, such as feather lays and uh, um, Hawaiian uh, um, outrigger canoes. Mm -hmm. um, and so all of those craftsmen are part of the hui, the family uh, um, that um, make beautiful crafted products in Hawaii for us. And so very often, uh, we're working with uh, um, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the resorts to, um, to educate um, visitors about these products like that. Can people, if they're interested, go visit your workshop? Yes. Um, give us a call, uh, and we'll ha be happy to uh, uh, give you a tour. Um, we don't have structured tours, uh, uh, um, so uh, like every, every day at a certain date, time, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but we're always very, very welcome to share what we're doing. In fact, we'd love to share um, so that um, people can better understand um, the beauty of um, fine craftsmanship in, in, in Koa furniture. We actually don't want it to be a, a, a secret. Uh, mm -hmm. We want people to know. Mm -hmm. um, and, so, uh, and, and so we um, take every opportunity 
uh, uh, to speak as we are uh, today uh, about the beautifully crafted co-op products that we have. Um, something else that um, I would add that we do is um, we try to uh, 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 participate as much as possible uh, with uh, charitable organizations when they need help. Um, and sometimes that's going to be uh, um, through help, um, through designing and crafting um, items that they need mm -hmm. uh, um, to also uh, uh, um, um, creating gifts that they could also uh, use to help raise funds. And so we're, we're, we're involved intimately uh, with the community that way too. I see. That's actually linked to my next question, which is, uh, I suppose you do uh, custom designs and gifts and pieces. As a matter of fact, um, our special orders is a very big business for us. Um, Usually what it takes is a customer needs to know exactly what they're looking for. Mm. And so, for example, if they see a beautiful uh, bed or a desk out of Architectural Digest, or if they pull something out of Martha Stewart magazine and they say, I want to make this out of Koa, or can you make this for me? Mm. Um, our master craftsmen are so skilled that they can take a single picture um, and actually make a piece of furniture out of that. Mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact, we are um, the fine furniture maker of Iolani Palace. And we've helped the Iolani Palace to, um, to create or recreate pieces of furniture that were lost um, with the overthrow of the Iolani Palace uh, uh, in the late 1800s. Oh, wow. And so literally what was left, for example, was just one grainy picture uh, of a display cabinet owned by King Kalakaua. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just this one two-dimensional picture. And we recreated that entire item, uh, uh, that entire piece, uh, um, uh, based on that one picture. And, and where, that's, that's, where is that piece now? It's in Iolani Palace. Okay, people that's can right. go there and that's visit. Right. And see it. And so, so the whole idea is when you're a master craftsman, you actually don't need blueprints mm -hmm. uh, um, to um, create a piece of furniture. You can just see the piece of furniture um, and uh, or see a picture of it, and you'll be able to design it and recreate it that way. And that's why I say it takes 25 years at least mm -hmm. to become a master craftsman because our master craftsman must be skilled to be able to take a, uh, a magazine tear and recreate, or a picture from a magazine, and recreate a piece of furniture just from that one piece that way. Amazing. It's definitely art. It's right. fine art. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is. Oh, yeah, well, I think it is. Clearly, you love uh, co-op furniture just from the way you talk about it. And right. how did you get involved in uh, Martin MacArthur? Actually, I was living on the mainland after I graduated from high school here in Honolulu. Um, I lived on the mainland for quite a, a, a large number of years of my adult life, and I worked for uh, large companies such as uh, McDonald's and Starbucks and Nordstrom and Borders. Um, but I always thought Hawaii was home, mm. and so I always wanted to come back to Hawaii. Uh, and looking for the right opportunity was key. Um, um, an opportunity with a company here in Hawaii that I could apply what I learned uh, in large retailers on the mainland and also give back, um, do something that was going to promote um, a heritage or a legacy in Hawaii. Uh, and so looking for a company that had a combination of that, a strong retail presence or uh, um, 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 craftsmen who were creating something here in Hawaii was something that I was looking for. Mm -hmm. And so when uh, John Martin uh, uh, was looking uh, to retire, um, we got together um, and uh, 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 John was looking for somebody who was going to uh, take Martin and MacArthur and continue the passion that he had mm -hmm. uh, for 46 years mm -hmm. um, and to drive the company to uh, another level but maintain uh, the respect of craftsmen and promote that uh, um, continually throughout Hawaii to elevate the idea of fine craftsmanship in Hawaii and that's something that I have a passion for. And wow. so although I personally am not a fine uh, uh, furniture craftsman, I definitely am the number one champion of them in Hawaii. I'm sure you have the eye. I, I, I think <laughs> I, I, I have a fine appreciation for it. That's right. Let's take our last short break. Okay. Um, this is uh, Think Tech Asia, and we've been speaking with uh, Mr. Michael Tam, President and CEO of uh, Martin and MacArthur, uh, on the topic, Thinking Outside the Core Box. We'll be right back after this short break. Hi, my name is Dr. Rafi. Every week, I'm right here at Think Tank Hawaii, 3 p.m. on Mondays. My show is Boards as Bio Briefings. What do we do here? Well, we watch sperm swim. We see if they catch anybody. We check out the latest biosimilars. You know, the kind that, uh, what was his name? The guy with the bicycle? Uh, I guess we forgot his name, but he was taking EPO and other human growth factors. We'll be talking about human growth factors. You want to know where to get some? 
Maybe I'll tell. Anyway, you can catch me, as I said, every week right here, Monday, 3 p.m., Think Tech Hawaii, Dr. Rafi. You can also find me on Twitter, BioInfo Medical. Or you can catch me on Facebook, Dr. Rafael Boritzer. I'll be happy to converse with you. Aloha. Hi, we're back. We're live. This is Think Tech Asia. I'm your host, Hong Jiang, and we've been speaking about the core wood, the core furniture. So, uh, Michael, let's come back to the resource side right. that we started with in terms of uh, core wood uh, being a uh, native tree right. and its resources are uh, kind of dwindling, although it's not in the... It's not an endangered species, yeah, endangered species. Or, 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 or wood by any means. Uh, but uh, um, uh, we only harvest from dead or fallen trees. And that part is very interesting and to so me. And so we never in our history have so, ever cut down a single koa tree. Is it only Martin MacArthur doesn't cut down trees or any uh, furniture makers using koa wood? Frankly, would I don't not believe cut. anyone uh, in Hawaii uh, is using wood uh, um, from trees other than trees that have fallen naturally. Oh, interesting. Um, and uh, I, of course, I can't speak for everyone, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. um, but I'd like to think that um, almost everyone, if not everyone, is using dead or fallen wood. Um, and, and this is there, only coming from private land. Not and there are the that many land. fallen woods for you to use? Uh, do you ever frankly, find? Frankly, the, uh, the, the beauty of, of koa is, is that um, uh, the wood uh, is allowed to grow in its natural uh, 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 environment. Um, and then after maybe 50, 60, 70, depending on, on, on the koa tree years, um, very often um, the koa tree is, is, is going to get weaker. Uh, um, and, um, and a wind is going to come or a storm is going to come and it's going to actually knock the tree down or the tree for some reason okay. through eroding uh, is, going to, is going to come down. And then so when you go into the mid elevations in the Big Island, and I've been there, mm -hmm. uh, um, you see incredible numbers of koa tree uh, 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 um, trunks. Uh, that are just laying on the forest there. Oh, interesting. And so it's actually not as if, my goodness, you have to wait for a tree to fall. There's tons of trees that are already down on the ground that have fallen naturally. So we never, ever, ever uh, want to be responsible for uh, um, cutting down a, a tree, and we never are. As a matter of fact, when we take the wood from a dead tree, we take it out of the forest, and that allows uh, the, the young seedlings, the koa seedlings, um, to germinate and to grow. Um, because you figure um, all those seedlings uh, or all those uh, um, koa seeds are underneath a huge trunk that could be as big as six or eight feet across. And mm -hmm. so they're not going to grow. Uh -huh. And so they've got these dead trees that are on the ground. I see. And so when you take the dead tree away, um, the new growth can happen. So you're helping to regenerate the, the, the trees. And that's something that Martin MacArthur has done for decades mm -hmm. in working with uh, private plantation owners. What we're sure is that the plantation owners who actually own the land, because yeah. we don't own any of the land, um, they're fencing off the areas um, where um, they're selecting to harvest the dead trees. Okay. The reason why fencing off the land is so important is because there's cattle, uh, um, and pigs roaming around, dogs roaming around uh, many of these plantations, mm -hmm. um, and you want to prevent those cattle and those pigs um, from eating the young koa seedlings. I see. Okay. And so by fencing it off, you're not keeping the cattle in, you're keeping the cattle out. That's and right. And that way the koa seedlings can grow uh, um, uh, uh, without being uh, uh, um, devoured or destroyed by, by, uh, by livestock. A couple questions related to this. Um, the first question is that when a tree is fallen, will the wood be weakened? Ah, um, actually, um, very often because a tree is going to fall um, when it's in a ripe old age, and they yeah. could fall anywhere between 50 to 80 years old. Um, and a tree that that's old uh, uh, um, uh, um, very often has very strong wood. Uh, because it's been growing for such a long time. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, granted, the center or the heart of the tree might have been weakened and eroded, mm -hmm. and that uh, um, was the vital lifeline, so to speak, of the tree because it's the dead center of the tree like that. Um, when that erodes, uh, 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 um, there's a greater chance that the koa tree is going to fall down. The wood itself is still very strong, okay. um, and it um, stays preserved in, in its natural form that way uh, on, the, on the mountains uh, for quite a while. 
Um, so it's just a matter of finding the right trees to harvest mm -hmm. that are already fallen down. And then, uh, uh, and then the battle begins, because the battle is uh, to be able to cut that dead tree uh, into smaller pieces and lug it down the mountain. Because, you know, this is in the middle of a forest. That's right. Um, yeah. There are no roads. Um, mm. and, uh, uh, and frankly, uh, what you need, it's, it's back-breaking work to get these trees down from the forest. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. And it's all on, of course, private land, and so the plantation owners are the ones who hire um, harvesters, um, and they identify particular dead trees that they want to harvest, okay. and the harvesters are responsible for cutting the wood and bringing the wood down. Oh, so you don't have to send people out to we look don't. for these. Okay. We don't. As a matter of fact, what we do is we partner up with plantation owners um, and their harvesters to identify the wood that we're looking for, mm -hmm. and they know that, for example, we're looking for curly koa wood. In fact, um, um, only about 10% of all koa wood in Hawaii is curly, having that rippling effect like a ribbon. Oh. The rest is select, or it doesn't have that effect. Oh, okay. So not all wood, koa wood, has that rippling effect. It just so happens that we are choosing to buy curly koa wood. And oh. so we pay the price and we are looking especially for that wood. And so when you look into our stores, the vast majority of everything that we have in there is made out of curly koa wood. Okay. Even though that's not necessarily um, the way most of the koa is in Hawaii, because most of it is select, not curly. So the curly is not because of the species, it's just because of how it's grown. Um, it's a combination of the environment um, as well as uh, um, 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 uh, the, uh, the DNA of that particular tree. I see, okay. And so sometimes um, uh, uh, people find that certain uh, pieces of trees of koa uh, um, have curl in them because of stress or because the constant buffeting through the wind, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, maybe oh, at a bow. I uh, see. And it, because it's such a rigid wood, it's t tossing back and forth ah. uh, for decades on end. And other times you're going to find a um, curl that's growing naturally in a tree hmm. just because it's in the, the natural DNA I of that see. tree. I that, see. That's it's interesting. It's a combination of two things, but it's not in all the koa. Hmm. It's just in a smaller percentage of the koa. I see. And that's why getting um, a select uh, or, or, or selecting the right amount or the right um, koa trees is so important. Hmm. Talk about your collaboration with Hawaii Legacy Woods. We love our, our partnership with Hawaii Legacy Hardwoods. As a matter of fact, Martin MacArthur was the very number one partner uh, for Jeff Dunster and Hawaii Legacy Hardwoods. Um, um, I contacted Jeff Dunster when I first heard about what he was doing uh, to um, farm uh, koa wood, and I wanted uh, Martin MacArthur to be a part of that. And mm. so um, now, for every piece of koa furniture we sell, mm -hmm. we plant a new koa tree mm. um, um, in honor of that, of that customer. And so literally, uh, uh, we buy the koa trees from Hawaii Legacy Hardwoods, um, and then we literally give the tree uh, or the, uh, the certificate for the tree planting to the customer. Of course, the customer doesn't own the tree okay. uh, because the tree is uh, um, uh, there to be grown and never to be cut down. Okay. Because none of these trees that we're planting are ever, ever going to be cut down. Mm -hmm. They're part of perpetuating uh, uh, the uh, uh, koa wood in Hawaii and the, the heritage of koa here. Um, and so this is not um, plant a koa tree now so you can harvest it to make a rocking chair uh -huh. 10 years later. I see. These trees will never be cut down. And so a lot of our customers feel very good about that because first, the wood that we're using is coming from a dead tree already. And when they buy a piece of furniture, they're planting a new koa tree. And so econo ecologically, it's a very green proposition. Uh, what's really fascinating, uh, you know, one of the things, things that's really fascinating to me is uh, um, Martin MacArthur is involved in uh, helping to reforest the land uh, while not really taking any forest right. from the land. That's and right. a lot of people have the image that if you're using wood, you're depleting the forest. Right. And this is not the case at this all. Is not it's the just case the opposite, all. which it's is really fascinating. Opposite. Yeah. Because we are taking the dead trees out of the forest or, That's right. or our yeah, helping the new trees to grow. New trees to grow. Exactly. Because they will not grow if there are dead trees on top That's of the ground. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Really, really fascinating. We have just uh, maybe one minute for you to uh, uh, ref respond to this question. What about the vision of a Martin MacArthur in the next uh, five, ten years? Well, what Martin MacArthur, we want Martin MacArthur to do is um, um, to be able to enhance a lifestyle of living well and living elegantly in Hawaii. Um, because koa um, should not be revered for simply being the wood. Uh, it should be part of a lifestyle in Hawaii. 
Um, and frankly, we want more people to enjoy the beauty of koa wood. Uh, and that could be through a personal accessory such as a watch or, or sunglasses, um, and it could be through koa furniture. But we also want to be sure that koa is here for many, many, many future generations because it's not for us simply here to enjoy, but for future generations. So we want to be sure that koa is here for uh, generations to enjoy for many years to come. That's a great vision, and thank you so much, Michael, for being here. Our pleasure. Yeah. So uh, we have to close here. This is the Think Tech Asia, and we've been speaking with uh, Mr. Michael Tam, President and CEO of Mar uh, Martin and MacArthur, to talk about the Coa Wood, thinking outside the Coa Box. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank our viewers for tuning in. This is uh, Think Tech Asia. I'm your host, Hong Jiang. I'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you. Goodbye.